This is Hadrian Radio coming to you from Free Catalonia, a KA Radio production. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Radio Hadrian. This week, I've, I've had a couple of weeks of a break, and we've been repeating some of the English programs, but um, this week um, I decided I'd start again because there is so much happening here in Catalonia and a lot of it is quite complex, particularly in contrast to the situation in Scotland with referendums. Okay, we've got some things that are the same and some things that are different. When you read in the mainstream media about the events that take place here in Catalonia, some of it is probably quite complex and some of it is very misleading. So I thought that I would devote this program to events that are taking place now in the lead up to October the 1st, the date of the on-off referendum, but also the events that have led up to this and why it's the way it is here. And hopefully what I talk about today will perhaps enlighten some people as to what the situation is here. I also know that there are people out there in the uh, non-Catalan world who will know far more about this than I do. Just because I live here and I'm living within this culture does not mean that I'm an expert at all, but I do have a good understanding of it. Therefore, this is my version of the events here. I hope it's useful. I called this episode The Never Ending Story, The Ups and Downs of the Catalan Independence Journey. David and I had been talking a few weeks ago somewhat in jest about uh, rigorendums, which of course was the Scottish referendum in 2014, and the the fact that both of our countries, Scotland and Catalonia, have got never-ending referendums. So, and we, we came up with this idea of a never-random story. So what's the real problem here? Why are the ordinary people in the world being told that Catalans are being denied their democratic right to vote? Well, like it or not, currently... Catalonia is still part of Spain, just like Scotland is still part of the UK. Uh, we may not want to refer to ourselves as uh, UK or British or Spanish, but we are still part of those constitutional countries. Therefore, Catalonia is still bound by the Spanish constitution. You could say Franco may be dead. He may have died back in 1975, but his legacy lives on. Franco is, in a sense, very much alive and the impact of Franco is still felt. So he died in 1975, and before he died, he appointed the current king, King Philippe VI, to succeed him. Now, Franco was a dictator, as we all know. He appointed the king, and therefore, as far as I can see it, the king is really a replacement of Franco, and clearly is going to be against any region, or any area, any part, I'm going to be careful what words I use here, of the nation of Spain breaking away and becoming separate states. In 1978, the Spanish constitution was written. In that constitution, there is a very clear legal point which says that nothing, I'm not quoting here, but this is what it says, nothing must be allowed to damage or break up or impede upon the sovereignty of Spain as a whole. So nothing is allowed to break into that. So it stands to reason that Spain is going to be totally against independence of any of the autonomous areas. So following that constitution being written and this very, very clear point in it, that point is very, very relevant in what is happening today. But then we, we have some years of, let's say, Spain as a whole, and I have to say Spain as a whole because I'm, I'm talking about the entire country, supposedly becoming democratic and joining, you know, the Western world. Well, in a sense, yes, that's true. But underlying that, it's not true. In 2013, a question was put to the people of Catalonia, the tricky question, because it wasn't one question, it was two questions, and it was about independence. It was to gauge people's feelings. And if you want to know more about this, you can watch David's uh, videos on YouTube about the tricky question, La Pregunta Trampa. The first question was, do you want Catalonia to become a state? Second question was, do you want to be an independent one? 
So do you want that state to be an independent one? When you think about those questions and you, you think they're no-brainers, aren't they, in terms of independence, they're blatantly, obviously trick questions. Obviously, if you want independence, you want your state to become an independent state. After asking the people this, a year later, in 2014, on November the 9th, only a few months after the rigged Scottish referendum, under the presidency of Artur Mas, a, ref a non-binding referendum was held in Catalonia, where supposedly the majority of people were in favour of independence. The results of that led to elections almost a year later, in September 2015. Prior to these elections, a new party was formed. One of the things here I must add is that Unlike in Scotland, where we've had the same parties uh, for, for decades, the, the parties don't change in Scotland. They, sh they need to change because uh, this is a whole other story, of course, because we know that the SNP are not delivering independence. In fact, we know that they have no intentions of delivering independence. But we don't get any new parties. Um, here, the parties uh, break up, reform, form new parties. There's a continual movement, but it is generally with the same people breaking up, forming new parties, then doing the same as the previous parties did. So in the lead up to the election in September 2015, a new party was formed called Junts Pel C, and it was formed from Convergencia and ERC, 2015 September, the election. In this election, Artur Mas won a mandate for, to declare independence with 72 MPs, deputats as they're called here. He, in, he got a mandate to declare independence and that is the most important thing in this whole sad, sorry story. A few months later in January, a new president, Carlos Puigdemont, was helicoptered in from almost nowhere. He had no political history apart from um, local politics in his home state, but no political history in terms of ambition to be uh, the, the president or to bring the country to independence. He inherited the mandate from Artur Mas. That is so important. Bear that in mind whenever you hear anything about what is happening here in Catalonia and referendums that Carlos Puigdemont has a mandate to declare. Some months later, in May 2016, David, as many of you will know, embarked on a hunger strike. He started planning that hunger strike as soon as Puigdemont arrived on the scene because Puigdemont's um, rise to presidency was so questionable. And David embarked on a hunger strike to protest against the mandate to declare independence not being acted on. He also included in that hunger strike um, support and protest for Scotland because of our rigged referendum and that no media were talking about it. It was a blanket silence. And there still is. So David embarked on this hunger strike and you can listen to episode 2 of Radio Hadrian in English and there's also a Catalan version where um, David is interviewed about the hunger strike and about his subsequent period of psychiatric internment because of the hunger strike when he was uh, tricked and then held in psychiatric a psychiatric unit for two months because of his political actions. Here we've got Carlos Puigdemont reporting to be a president who wants to take Catalonia to independence but who has a mandate to declare tomorrow, today. Here, bec because of this, there is a more advanced UDI movement here, although when I say more advanced, it certainly isn't advanced enough. If it was advanced enough, they would be independents, wouldn't they? And there isn't. Each year on September the 11th, as you know, there is a big, a big gathering in Catalonia called La Diada, and it, it's the the national day. It's a public holiday, and it's also a day when uh, independents independentists come out in force with the Esteladas and the merchandisers uh, make a lot of money out of the t-shirts and the mugs and the key rings and the flags and if you can put an Estelada on it it will sell and so each year Carlos Puigdemont talks about this and 
he he talks about it as though he has no idea about the mandate that he inherited he never he never ever makes reference to it he makes a lot of reference to spain not allowing catalonia to have independence and hence that's what the trouble is at the moment we've got the beginning of 2017 this year whisperings about another referendum a scottish style referendum that's how it's referred to here it beats me why you'd want to have a scottish style referendum because the scottish referendum was rigged and it failed it was rigged to fail scotland is no closer to independence now and in fact i think it's probably further away so here we have the people the media the politicians pushing to have a scottish style referendum and by june to this year 2017 the referendum date was announced on the 9th of june the 1st of october was announced as the date for the referendum and of course between the 9th of june and the 1st of october there are several months of which many many things can happen and david and i sat and talked about this and reflected on the fact that it was going to be very interesting to watch and see what events, what shenanigans take place before the referendum. So at this point, and periodically, you must remember that Puigdemont inherited a mandate to declare independence. Mars signed off on his referendum, and he was allowed to have a referendum. And from that referendum, he got a, an election, and then he got a mandate. Puigdemont cries out for a referendum for a referendum he knows he's not going to be allowed to have but he also knows he doesn't need to have it at the beginning of the summer july i think it was about july 17th at the start of the summer recess the mps all went off on holidays and instead of going far away they were all told not to go too far away in case Something happened in case they needed to be called back. A strange thing to say to your um, MPs or your employees, whatever, that you, in any situation, don't go too far away because you might need to come back. Now, also in July, a meeting took place, which is an interesting meeting, and I'm quite sure that this has not been reported in any, uh, me any newspaper or any, on the BBC or anywhere else. A meeting took place of the Junta de Securi Securitat, Sorry for my pronunciation. My Catalan advances slowly. This is um, a joint Spanish and Catalan Security Council. And they met in July this year for the first time in eight years. Also, the Mossos de Squadra had been without um, what, what is called the, ma the major here. So the head of the Mossos de Squadra, which is the Catalan police, had had no leader for several years. And... This year, a major was appointed. August 17th, as you all know, what is now known as the Barcelona attack took place, focusing on Las Ramblas, and the, I'm not going to talk about the attack because we've already done programs about that. Then on the, on the 19th of August, two days after the attack in Las Ramblas, a giant demonstration was organized in Plaza Catalunya. Mariano Rajoy, the, current, the Prime Minister of Spain, and King Philippe both attended. People were asked not to fly the Estelada, that this wasn't about independence, which of course it was because we know that the attacks on the Thursday were very much about independence. And it was called, the protest was called No Tink Por. We don't have any fear. We're not afraid. There's a certain irony in that because, in actual fact, the very people who are promoting the fear were the people who were leading the demonstration. Puigdemont, Junqueras, uh, the King, Rajoy, the main players in this game. To their credit, the independentists booed the King, which seems quite appropriate, doesn't it? Because it's his constitution which is denying independence, but... We also, as you can tell, know that Puigdemont is a main player in that. He's, he's no victim and he's no rebel either. Fast forward a f um, couple of weeks to September and, of course, talk of the referendum increased, especially following these attacks. And as we're now into September, everybody goes back to work and the schools go back 
and business resumes some sense of normality, on the 6th of September, Puigdemont signed off on the referendum. On the referendum that he knows he can't have and he knows he doesn't need to have. So he's, he's, signing, off on, he's signing off on nothing. By midnight, the next day, on the 7th, Rajoy annulled that document, said, no, you're not having your referendum. You can't have a referendum. It's against the Spanish constitution. Friday, the Catalan independentists are out in force crying, we want democracy, we want democracy, we want the right to vote in a referendum, we want the right to have a referendum, and of course portraying Rajoy as the big bad wolf. Now, Rajoy may well be um, the um, enemy of the Catalan independence, of, of course he is, but he's doing he's only doing his job he, he's not stupid Puigdemont's not stupid either Rajoy is doing the job he was elected to do to preserve the sovereignty of the nation of Spain and therefore he cannot allow a referendum now this is slightly different to the case in, in the Scottish referendum so Rakoi cannot turn around and say, yes, of course, you can have a referendum. And of course, if he was going to do that, he may as well just turn around and say to, to Catalonia, well, of course, you can be independent. But he's doing his job. He's not the big bad wolf. He's the prime minister of Spain and has a constitution to uphold and sovereignty of his country to preserve. Now, don't get me wrong, that does not mean I, I like what he's doing. I want Catalonia to be independent. I want Scotland to be independent. I want lots of small countries around the world to be independent and not be oppressed by big bully imperialist countries. Puigdemont, on the other hand, you could say he's also doing his job. He's doing his job to deny independence to Catalonia. If he was a true independentist leader, he would have acted upon his mandate. But he, he didn't even have to work to get that mandate. Artur Mas did the work before him. Puigdemont just helicoptered in one day in January and inherited a mandate and has done nothing with that mandate. He doesn't talk about it. He doesn't refer to it. Meanwhile, all around Catalonia in 948 municipalities, each one represented by its own mayor, have a particular role to play in all of these shenanigans. The mayors here are all attached to political parties and they also represent the people in their municipalities. So following Rakoy annulling the referendum, the mayors had to make some kind of decision. Do they, do they want their people to keep crying out for a referendum? So yes, we want a referendum or not. Forget the fact that the referendum is not going to bring independence anyway. We know that. But this is all about whether or not Catalonia gets a referendum or doesn't get a referendum at this moment. 712 of the mayors have said yes. They want the referendum. So the mayors are, mm, let's say they're giving the impression of being very rebellious. You know, we will defy Spain. We will defy Madrid. We will have our referendum. Knowing fine well that the referendum, if it happened is going to be rigged, like the Scottish one, so it's a Scottish-style referendum, but it's also going to be taking them no further to independence. Also, meanwhile, since Rakoy annulled the document just over a week ago, the Spanish police have been raiding printers' offices and other businesses that were associated with uh, the, the uh, equipment and the materials needed for a referendum, so ballot boxes, ballot papers, and so on and so on. And, of course, the media is full of photographs of incredibly serious-looking Spanish police members standing outside offices with crowds of Catalans protesting against them. It's all part of the big game show. These are they're wonderful pictures, you know, the big bad Spanish police and the, the poor Catalans who are being denied their democratic right to vote. But, you know, we had La Diada, on Monday the 11th, as usual, as it happens every September the 11th. And what's interesting is that in the, the years I've lived here, the numbers attending La Diada have dropped. 
In 2014, there were photographs beamed around the world showing approximately 2 million Catalan independentists on the street. Those were very powerful images. And every, the world saw those images and looked and thought, oh, look at those Catalans. They want independence. And look, 2 million of them. 2 million isn't the majority of people here. The numbers attending La Diada have dropped. And this year, approximately only 1 million people turned out. Now, there could be any number of reasons for that. But it could also suggest that interest in independence is dwindling. Perhaps one of the things, another thing that I think is, is worth mentioning as I come towards the end of this is that here in Catalonia, I, I read something in social media the other day where somebody uh, was discussing how, you know, that those brave Catalans again, as every 11th of September, particularly in Scotland, they say, oh, look, the Catalans know how to do things. They, you know, they've got spirit, they've got um, political strength, but they don't. It's a big party. La Diada is a festival. It's great. It's a gathering. People come together. They meet their friends. They're, they laugh. They bring the dogs, the children, the babies. And then there's, you know, there's music concerts at night. There's lots of merchandising. It's a great big holiday. And it is a holiday. People get time off work. It's a holiday. It doesn't do anything for independence at all. But this thread I was reading on social media, it was on Facebook. And Somebody had said, oh, look at the Catalans. Oh, I wish we were like that in Scotland. And a response was, ah, but it's different because in Catalonia, 100% of the people there want independence. Now, let's clear this up. That's not quite true. Here in Catalonia, there is a very diverse population. There are the, the native Catalans, of course. And without doing a poll, I would say most of them would want independence. But... There are also many people here from other parts of Spain, particularly the south of Spain, from Andalusia. Many of them. People who came north to Barcelona in the 60s and the 70s to find work, or were sent here to find work. And there are also many, many Spanish-speaking people from the South American countries, as well as people from other European countries, from America, uh, there's not very many Australians here. There are a few, uh, and there's a few Scots, but it's quite a diverse population. And out of the Catalan people, there are going to be Catalans who don't want independence, just like there are Scots people who don't want independence. And why would that be? Because some of those families inherited money, inherited power, through Franco's years, and they're not going to vote away that wealth. There are people from other parts of um, this, the Iberian Peninsula, I nearly said Spain, who live here and whose families have been born here and brought up here and who don't want independence. And if we were talking about a true democracy, everybody has the right to their own view. You do, just because you are Catalan or you live here does not mean you have to want independence. I think Catalonia should be independent. I have no doubts about that. But I respect other people's right to form their own opinions. I know that view is not going to be very popular, but I have the same view in Scotland too. So we've got quite a mixed situation here and a lot of uh, false views overseas in Scotland, particularly in Scotland, I think, because Scots watch what happens here and think that here is advancing towards independence. And that's not the case. And you know that on La Diada this year, as I was watching and listening and thinking, the, the cry was for democracy. The cry was for, we want our democratic right to have a referendum. That was wrong because they don't need to have a referendum. The cry should have been, we want independence, Mr. Puigdemont. You have a mandate to declare and you are not doing the job we want you to do but he is doing the job his bosses want him to do and then to top it all off at the end of the day well not quite the end of the day it was in the afternoon we had a so-called terrorist operation on Monday the 11th which resulted in La Sagrada Familia this is the church that Gaudi started building and is still being built as many of you will have been here you'll know the place 
Many of you will have heard of it. You'll see pictures of it. It's a very distinct building. Massive tourist destination. A terrorist operation took place. La Sagrada Familia was evacuated. The metros were shut down. A couple of hours later, police said it was a false alarm. But by so doing, we had Las Ramblas, then we had La Diada, and we had all the shenanigans with Puigdemont signing off, Rajoy annulling the referendum, and then cries for democracy and a false alarm just to keep the fear barometer ticking over. There will be no doubt more events between now and the 1st of October. Who knows? I know that David is going to talk much more about events that um, surround the referendum and Spain. So I'm going to say goodbye now. Thank you for listening. I hope this may have put the, the situation here into some kind of nutshell. It's not in detail, but it gives you a timeline as to why things are happening and why you're hearing cries for democracy and why you're hearing that you know, Madrid won't let uh, the Catalans have their referendum. Well, Madrid can't let them have a referendum, can they? And it's not democracy that Catalans should be shouting for. It's independence, DUI, UDI. Thank you for listening and have a lovely afternoon. And we'll speak to you again next week. Okay, bye for now. This is Hadrian Radio, coming to you from Free Catalonia, a KA Radio production. Good afternoon, Scotland. This is David Rabantos. This will be the chapter 11, 12, 13 in Radio Hadrian in its English version. I can not emphasize enough the fact that we encourage you to share and share and make this uh, program reach as many people anywhere in the world as you can. This program is going to be focused in Catalonia and I apologize to our Scottish audience but the reason to do that is because Barcelona and Catalonia now are in the crossing of two of the very big factors that are behind the hidden agendas of the New World Order. The New World Order needs to create wars and to create false flag attack to terrorize us and has an excuse to wage wars everywhere in the world. That's why we had a false flag attack in Barcelona one month ago. And another objective of the New World Order is to avoid nations like Quebec, Scotland, Flanders, Euskal Herria, Wales, Catalonia, everywhere in the world to become independent because it's easier for them to run the world if it's run by big unities like European Union, NATO, United Nations and so on. So these things put Catalonia on the front line of the defense of the idea of a better world for most of its inhabitants. That is why the importance and the thanks to KA Radio for the opportunity it gives us needs to be emphasized once again. Before somebody might be thinking, oh, they only have like uh, hundreds of people listening to them and they think they're too big for their boots. The importance of Radio Hadrian being the only media bringing the truth about the Scottish and Catalan processes to independence has to be emphasized because it's important. As we said, we mentioned Leo Strauss in a previous chapter, mentioning how the powers that be need to have everybody in the world light or in the dark, so they lie to all of us. And another important thing to have in mind is how um, Solomon Ash in his experiments showed us that if we as individuals receive a unanimous lie, no matter how big the lie is and how we perceive it, very few people are capable to go against a wall of lies, especially if it comes from the side we consider to be our own. So that, if you put that in context, and if you also remember the story of the emperor's new dress, where a whole people is light uh, into believing that there's a, some kind of dress which is done in very thin silk they cannot see when actually it's a, it's a scam, it's a fraud. 
Well, Radio Hadrian is here to do the part of that little child. And that's the reason why we have been targeted. We have been targeted into uh, people calling uh, people around us and threaten them to distance from us. It has to be people from secret services. Other people from secret services have been doing weird things in our social media. And we also had a very direct and nasty encounter with Anarche and Juan Bius and Sule Vicente, which are very important pieces of the deception that we are going on in Catalonia. In Catalonia, uh, in this program, we're going to talk about the Spanish or world strategy to postpone the Catalan referendum until 2019. We're going to also talk about Juan Vives and Anarche and other molds that are relevant in the process. We also are going to comment the President Carlos Puigdemont message uh, on the 10th of September previous to La Diada, which we had this year as well. And then we'll give you an update of the things about the false flag attack in Barcelona. And finally, WikiLeaks and the Catalan referendum, which is also a main actor one of these days. So we go for it. First of all, a historical hint, we the, the key word, they keep us controlled because of our ignorance of lots of things that go in the world and because of fear. And that's how they control us into turning us to uh, farm animals. Referendums are never going to bring independence from member states of European Union, NATO, and all these uh, happy friends, uh, Bilderberg, Trilateral, uh, International uh, Monetary Fund, uh, World Bank. All these pieces of the powers that be are not taking chances. They don't play dice. Okay, so everything that happens in the world has to be in accordance to their interest. And clearly the independence of Scotland and of Catalonia is not an interest they have. Thus, the only real way to independence both in Scotland and Catalonia is UDI. Because referendums don't bring independence. UDI cannot be fudged if you have a majority mandate and we have the international uh, court uh, ruling of the 22nd of July uh, 2010 in the case of Kosovo so that's the only real safe fast and internationally acceptable way to independence referendums are there to make us believe that we can get independence but if you realize the only way to murder independence is through a lost referendum but to wreak a referendum into losing it you have to go through the referendum passage. You cannot rig a referendum without having a referendum. I'm sorry for the oxymoron, but some things need to be stated. So, so for the powers that be to rig a referendum, they need to offer you a referendum first. So the situation in Catalonia, as has been outlined by Dilia, is we gave a mandate in 2015 for independence to uh, our parliament, and for two years they have an act on it. And we explained in Chapter 3 how Carlos Puigdemont is an infiltrator. In Chapter 4, how Vice President Uriol Junqueras is an infiltrator. In Chapter 5, we spoke about Juan Bibes. We, we really strongly recommend, if you want to have a different version of everything that mainstream media offer you, that you go through all the 10 chapters in Radio Hadrian and catch up with these things. Up to the point, what we're talking here is... Uh, something you're gonna hear nowhere else it's the world strategy to murder Catalan independence as it was at least this is coming on air on the 17th of September at least by the 11th of September the strategy of the new world order Spain and the Catalan leaders that they all work together was to murder independence by postponing the referendum until 2019 in which we will be very far away, six years away from 2013 where independence was ahead 40 points in the polls. One of the best ways to rig a referendum is to move it from the point where independence has a bigger advantage. That for us was 2013 and you see we're already four years away from our heyday so that's that's the plan if you, if you move things from the right moment time is so essential in life so they moved it already for four years 
they didn't act on the mandate that we gave them and now we have a lot of things happening at the same time we have had global Sachs, uh, Goldman Sachs saying that they think the referendum will happen it will be win won by yes but the lack of turnout the low turnout will make it not recognizable internationally which will force an a negotiation we've been having the false flag attack in Barcelona plus an, al an alert of toxic gases in the metro a few days after that and the false alarm in the Sagrada Familia to create uh, a scare image and terror in the city then we have all the actions being done by the Spanish government but and that's a very important thing it's very easy to hate London Westminster to hate Madrid all these things these things are easy and they take us nowhere no war is won by uh, attacking or by insulting or by hating the enemy those things don't bring us nowhere the one that can betray you betray you is your friend it's our side your side led you down by letting the Scottish referendum to be rigged but hey what can you expect from members of the Privy Council and here it's the same thing uh, in chapter 3 we, we show how Carlos Puigdemont is a we, we can be sure that that was the plan by 11 of uh, September because in that day, very relevant day, both Jordi Sánchez, which is the president of ANAC, Asamblea Nacional Catalana, which is social grassroots for independence, and Carlos Puigdemont, the, the president, both in different interviews, they let out that they would accept an agreement with Spanish government to postpone the referendum till 2018 or 2019 if there was an agreement to have it the Scottish style well that's the reason why they've been hiding to us lying to us about the Scottish referendum nobody knows here in Catalonia that the Scottish referendum was rigged so that has been like a utopia for us like oh we wish we could have a Scottish style referendum and now when some people have already started voting when abroad they tell us that they could arrange it with Spain but the question is Spain the, the question is referendum is not legal under Spanish law so they could declare UDI they have the majority they have the mandate but they don't and they try to get us crawling to a referendum that is illegal according to Spanish Constitution so we have a problem now we have Catalans wouldn't accept easily a postponement to 2018-2019 and Spaniards wouldn't accept an agreed referendum at all so something has to happen and bang the attacks in Barcelona have given an excuse for Donald Trump to sum up to summon Rajoy five days before the referendum to United States then we've also had a few months ago a senator or member of the Congress Dana Rodabacher visiting Barcelona and letting it out with a meeting with Enrique Millo, the Spanish government representative, that the referendum would be okay as far as Catalans lost it, which is the same line expressed by the New York Times, and it's an editorial that was very uh, circulated in Catalonia, saying that there has to be some agreement and referendum is good as far as it's lost by the independents, like it happened in Quebec in Scotland. They don't even hide it. So we have these things, we have Goldman Sachs, we have all these public things we have had false flag attacks that have created the opportunity for Trump to tell Rajoy and we have the Catalan side saying they would accept it to complement this, I mean this is here we are just putting in relation things that are public I mean we've made the effort of putting together the Goldman Sachs and Puigdemont, Trump, all these things, putting them together and up to this point, if it wasn't because they already surprised us at the last minute in 2013 with a tricky question, and then in 2014 it should be a referendum, but it became an opinion poll. And then in 2015 they should have gone to together to declare independence, but they came into different lists. And then in 2015 they had a majority and they could have declared independence and didn't. So, And then in 2016, by surprise, we get a new president. We've had so many surprises in everything related to the to, to the process that now the surprise would be that they don't have a surprise because everything relevant we have had a surprise against independence. So 
the idea that they're preparing this, considering false flag attacks, meetings, our side saying they would accept it, we've been hearing about, oh, we wish we had a Scottish-style referendum, all this is very important. But to link it and to know the importance of this being a plan, the same 11th of September, the members of this program, Radio Hadrian, received the attack on the persons of Joan Vives and Sule Vicens, of whom we spoke in Chapter 5, and Anarche. Anarche is his current partner. Anarche is one of the international faces of the Catalan process, Anamol. She appeared out of nowhere in 2008, introduced by Joan Vives, then not her partner. And she is a contributor in Bella Caledonia. And she was having a conference in Barcelona the 19th of August, in which she introduced none other than Amer Anwar, who is one of the key witnesses in whatever happened in Barcelona the 17th of August. So the links with Scotland are, are strong. We said she's a contributor in Bella Caledonia. Two years ago, she ran away from Delia and me while we were asking Shona McAlpine why um, why there were no exit polls and Shona McAlpine lied blatantly to us saying that she was part of it which is easy to confront that is a lie because in the in the book uh, 100 days or the, the dream will never die 100 days to the referendum by Alex Salmon he says there literally that he's sorry they didn't do uh, exit polls this time so Shona McAlpine was there lying in front of Joan Vives and Anarche. They took away the microphones from us, we were censored. She also has done conferences with uh, Angus Brendan McNeil one day when he didn't have more interesting things to do in hotels in London while well, he was giving conferences about independence in Catalonia with Anarche and he, she has also been uh, in conferences with Humza Yusuf, Gail Lithgow and other Scottish relevant people. So she, she, she has strong links with Scotland but she has created and broken countries here, uh, parties. Solidaritat, she, she's been put in places and she always creates mayhem because she works for Spain. And then Juan Vives, who is the guy who has made Carlos Puigdemont president of Catalonia by a telemarketing campaign in which he supported CUP, which is the splinter party that demoted Artur Mas to put Carlos Puigdemont in. We have somebody who has put the president of Catalonia where he is, that has done telemarketing for Coop, and that has put Uriol Junqueras as president of Esquerra. And then he came to us in La Diada, very aggressive, while Anarche was, was attacking us, and there was, the two of us, I thought they were going to go to our necks, and they were trying for this program to spread what they wanted. This guy is number one spy. This guy is number one intoxicator. He calls thousands of people to make things happen in Catalonia. He is the kingmaker of all these people we've said and others. He is the dark horse in Catalan politics and he targeted this program and he wanted us to spread the lie that he's going to be spreading to thousands of people with a reach of millions of people, which is that people inside the Catalan side will bring down the number of turnout to the referendum so it can be not accepted internationally. If you put the two things together, you see how it works. You have publicly things seem to be conspiring for this postponement, uh, the, the Scottish style, and the gutter, in the gutter, in the underground, Juan Vives and Anarche, all these people who've been destroying the Catalan independentism for the last 20 years, they're spreading that the way the referendum is going to be held is going to be served to nothing because it won't be recognized internationally. Well, it doesn't take being Einstein to put two and two together that if we have Goldman Sachs, uh, Trump, uh, we have Assange, uh, Wikileaks, we have our president saying they would accept a Scottish style. If we have all this in public, and then on the underground, we have number one infiltrated mole, Juan Vives and Anarche, spreading that the way the referendum is going is not going to be valid. It's going to create a state of mind in the Catalan independentists, so when the surprise arrives, they will accept it. And that's going to be a big decision as big as Operation Overlord or Minsmith, where Hitler was expecting 
the Allies to enter Greece once and Brittany the other, and the attacks happened in Sicily and Normandy. Big deception here. So when we have this information, and we have this inside information because we've known Beavis for 30 years, so that puts us in a position where no other media in this country is. The other day I was speaking with several photojournalists and none of them knew who Joan Beavis is. So that has made us a target because we are the only ones who are exposing the plans and the big deception. Don't be fooled. All these things you see about prohibitions, police, uh, mayors being called, this happens because our government and our parliament don't declare the UDI they have a mandate for. So they are responsible. They are working in teams. Rajoy is a unionist playing the unionist, but the pro in this side is worse. Because they're playing for the union, but they pretend to play for us. And the next thing I want to go into, the next thing I want to go into is to debunk uh, the message that Carlos Puigdemont uh, delivered to us the 10th of December, September, sorry, because I've never been lied to so blatantly in my life. For 4 minutes and 37, he just delivered the five following lies. He greeted everybody who collaborated in the 17th of August crisis management, and I have to agree with that, but he hid, of course, so he lied by omission because he didn't say it's a false flag to impede Catalan independence. So, first lie. Second, he said that the 1st of October we would vote as usual. As usual? With mayors being called to declare, with uh, posters being taken over by the police, with printing houses being searched by Guardia Civil, with the website being closed, with us not knowing if there will be voting the 1st of October, with us not knowing if the result would be acceptable internationally, with us not knowing if we can vote in our cities, with us not knowing if we have to be in the electoral tables or not, without publicity for the referendum not being able to be uh, broadcasted, with uh, our political leaders uh, having uh, been called and being, uh, having had lawsuits from Spain. Nothing but, as usual, nothing is like always. So lying to people saying it's like always, it's a big lie even for you, Carlos Fuizamón. Everybody who wants to know a bit more of him, chapter 3. Third lie, he says, look, oh, we would like to do it like in Scotland. That, that is because they have lied to us. Nobody told us about blank ballots, postal vote tampering, the irregularities in the betting, no exit polls, no chain of custody, IDOC's in charge, and all these things that let the people who's in the know, people better informed know that in Scotland it was rigged, rigged, rigged. So they tell us to want a referendum like uh, in Scotland, which is like telling Turkeys to vote for Christmas. Then the fourth lie, and well, it's difficult, it has to be Secret Service directly that passed in the message, because to pack as many crucial lies in so little time, it's a precision of a, it's a, it's a watchmaker, it's very precise. First, then he said that the laws of the referendum on a juridical transition, if the referendum was won, they could not be blocked by Spain because they were linked into international law. That is a big lie, uh, which is done using that normal people don't know about laws and that they trust their leaders. So when you have a leader lying to you blatantly about law, we believe it. Because until we declare independence, we will always be controlled by Spanish constitutional court. It doesn't matter if we mention international treaties. Always constitutional Spanish court will have the last say on our laws until we declare independence. It's easy if you're not blinded by faith. And the last, I would say the biggest lie, but it's difficult for me because they're all world record lies. But the final thing he said is, we're not doing a crime by doing this referendum. We're only exercising the mandate the Catalan people gave us. Lie. Big, big lie. The roadmap, the mandate we gave them mentioned referendum nowhere until after independence. Nowhere. So to say that this referendum is 
in exercise of the mandate we give them, it's another a red lie. For much less than this, we're saying about somebody who already lied about not having met Rajoy a few months ago after referendum. We have to remember that um, Richard Nixon could only lie once about Watergate and had to resign. But here we have Carlos Puigdemont, which is the world record in lying. But there's one thing we need to remember. If somebody lies to you once, it's his fault. But if somebody lies to you twice, or like in Carlos Puigdemont, if somebody lies to you every time he opens your mouth, it is your fault. It's our fault. Briefly, I'll mention WikiLeaks and the referendum. WikiLeaks has been very vocal in this referendum. We already debunked WikiLeaks or started to do so in Chapter 8. WikiLeaks is part of this New World Order to give us the impression that somebody is there with us, but it's not. WikiLeaks is there to get information that they pass to the CIA and other agencies, and it is there to cover the big false flag that happened in the world. If WikiLeaks don't say 9-11, Madrid, London, Barcelona are false flag attacks, and they blame everybody as being conspiracy theorists, they must be right because they're the good guys, isn't it? Well, no. They're one of the main armies of the bad guys. And I'll put an example, which is something uh, that which should show how they play with our brains. Uh, Trump wouldn't be president, highly probably, if it wasn't for the Podenta uh, mailings uh, about uh, Bernie Sanders in the, in the Hillary Clinton campaign. So, there's a lot of people who think Trump is the worst thing to happen in this planet, and at the same time think that WikiLeaks is one of the best things on their planet, but they're the same team. Somebody has been messing with their brain that we can like WikiLeaks and hate Trump at the same time. It doesn't go together. So, and this, with this, I'll go briefly into the false flag events in uh, Barcelona. Well, when you see that Donald Trump is having a meeting with Rajoy, that's going to be very convenient for the referendum. With everything we said in chapters 9 and 10, it becomes very clear that it is a false flag attack. We've had here, for our tiny country, now we have... Uh, Assange very involved, pushing for a referendum. We have the CIA saying that they weren't about the attacks, and we have Donald Trump having a meeting five days before the referendum. So, Catalonia has made it to the world news. And for that, the false flag attack was relevant. They executed everybody. We don't even know the time where the attack happened. Uh, they have avoided that the 18 cameras that I walked in front of and are in Ramblas to be shown and they've given fake evidence like tickets, purchase tickets and the obvious passports and all these things they always produce and we've had a fake alarm in, in, in Sarah Familia this week but one of the things I want to comment is a fake video of the supposed doer of the attack which has been kept for 26 days with somebody who doesn't take any camera and it's a video that's so fake that has been produced uh, to keep lying to people about it. It's a video about the supposed maker. We won't go into detail because we're running out of time. The summary is, don't fall for what they tell us. It's a huge deception. Referendums don't bring independence. The plan of the world up to a few days ago was to postpone the referendum and doing Scottish styles and then the time will have passed for us, support will go down, and referendum and independence will be lost. We here in Radio Adrian will keep being the leaders or we keep be supporting the resistance, and we're not gonna bend down. We want independence, we don't want referendum. Wenyarem, let's do this. This is Adrian Video coming to you from Free Catalonia, a KE Video Production.